the rundown brought to you by the purple quill the official newspaper of elder high school and we're back this is the final rundown edition i'm cole carly and i'm zach freeze and uh, this is the april rundown it's our last to get together rundown that we will have produced so uh we're gonna to bring to bring some more action for you and we're gonna uh, start off with the uh Lacrosse guys, uh, Ross Mullen just set a record for uh, most points in a game. For you, the one cap on that? Yeah, Ross with uh, I believe eight goals and only four or five assists, and uh, he's closing in actually on the uh, all-time single-season scoring record. I think um, over the last two games, he has a good chance to get it. So uh, hopefully, he, he can become that uh, single-season scorer. Yeah. And from there, we'll talk about the volleyball guys. The volleyball team is uh, again chasing after another state title as they are currently the top three in the state, along with X and Moeller. And uh, they are currently in the top three, at least for GCL. I know they dropped a couple games to Moeller that they can bounce back from. But they're playing some great, pe playing some great uh, teams right now and playing well as a team. Three, do you have anything about them? Well, yeah, I mean, you look at it, uh, Coach Tierney's done. You know, even when Elder, you know, they lose the early season matches, they still seem to, uh, you know, bounce back. You know, they're always a threat to win state. So even after a couple of, uh, you know, losses, uh, a few matches over the past few weeks, uh, still look out for them. Yeah, they're playing for the long run. Yeah. Uh, then we got to talk about the baseball team. I mean, they aren't above par like they usually have been, but they're still playing great competition, and they're still a good team. They, got, they can make a run in the tournament with, the pit, with their pitching especially. Gotta wake those bat, wake those bats up too. Yeah, they haven't been, you know, they haven't been as good as they uh, have been in years past, like you said. But they've been competitive in a lot of games, and they beat some good teams. Obviously, the uh, LaSalle game, Ben Farwick had that uh, walk off hit. But um, you know, as they, you know, win, uh, go on to the postseason. Hopefully, they win a game or two in the postseason and cap off a, a decent season. Yeah, and then we also got the track and field teams. And uh, they're doing, they're running strong. Uh, free to give any information on them? Um, I know, yeah, I think uh, they've been doing pretty well. I don't, uh, I don't know what kind of races they have coming up, but um, they've got. I think they actually have GCLs, uh, you know, this sometime this week. So um, I think it's been a successful season so far. And uh, as we, uh, as they, we approach the end of the year, just uh, hopefully they can. Make some noise in the uh, sectionals and maybe get the state. And, get the state. and the last spring sport, certainly not least, is the tennis team. They have some uh, strong senior, senior leadership in uh, Brandon Cole and Elliot Rearing. Even though Brandon Cole has some anger issues, so we don't need to talk about that right now. Yeah. Uh, Elliot Rearing and his partner, uh, uh, what's his partner? Danny, Danny Hurley. Danny Hurley have been playing really well as doubles, and they're trying to set the single season doubles record. Are they going to get it, Freezy? I don't think they are, actually. I, like, I hate to be a towner. I don't. I think it's a little bit of a mountain to climb. Uh, also, don't forget about uh, enraged tennis player Tony Timbers. As he, uh... hey, 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 don't forget about enraged uh, Tony Timbers. He also gets heated on the tennis courts. So, uh, but he, he's a good player to watch out for as well. Just needs to turn it down. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, we're gonna talk about. Uh, we have some uh, a Reds update. Currently still in. the what, first place in the division? Yeah. yeah. Flying strong. He said it through the rebuilding year. Uh -huh. I told you, they're going to be the contention, and they're still going strong right now. Don't what? Don't get your hopes up on the I mean, it's early. We're, we're in May. Um, a lot will change, obviously. Uh, the Reds are young, and they played well, but, I mean, it's just all good things are going to have to come to an end, and it's, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to hold up, unfortunately. I, they'll probably, you know. I think they could be competitive, but yeah. I just think it's not their year. Though. I like that they're a bunch of young guys that are trying yeah. to prove themselves, so they're going to play hard every day. Right. So yeah. I think it's going to be fun to go to the game because they're always going to compete. Yeah. Uh, one la and then the last thing we got to talk about today is the Bengals draft. Now, there is some controversial pick with Joe Mixon in, sec in the second round, and uh, John Ross in pick number nine with the defense available and not addressing the O-line. What's your thoughts overall on the Bengals draft? Well, I think uh, the Bengals had a pretty good draft. I think John Ross is interesting. Uh, I didn't love the pick, but he certainly is able to stretch the field. Uh, you look to you know the, the third and fourth rounders, Carl Lawson and or Jordan Willis and Carl Lawson. I think those are great value picks. Um, 
but Joe Mixon, I mean, you can say what you want about Mixon. He's, you know, he's a dirt bag, and you know he is. But as a football player, he's a great football player. Uh, you know, he's. I think he's going to have, you know, he's going to have a shot to get a lot of carries in his rookie season, and I think, you know, he could be a really good player for the Bengals. But you know, it's, it's, you know, disappointing. I guess that. My, you know, the Bengals organization stands for, you know, the, the ridiculous behavior we've seen. But, you know, if your goal, if you want to put winning over, you know, some of the uh, morals, moral things, then I guess, you know, that's what the Bengals are doing. So. I uh, think the big, I think some of the most impactful draft picks the Bengals have were in the late round. My favorite, mm -hmm. one of my personal favorites was Malone, who are a around Tennessee, and then also Willis and Carl Lawson. Yeah. Those three picks, I think, will make a big difference for the Bengals. I don't really understand taking the kicker in the fifth round. I know they need a kicker, but you can pick one, pick one up off the free agent market pretty easily. Right. So, I mean, next year is going to have to be all pro kind of guy within the next few years if he's going to prove to be worthy of a fifth round draft pick. Yeah. And then uh, we got a shout, out, shout out to Spencer Bono. Uh, breathe can you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, his first uh, offer to uh, Iowa, and uh, it's uh, many, there will be many more to follow, I can promise you that, from high profile schools. He's he's a freak of an athlete, and uh, I can't can't wait to see him. He's got two years, and he's got he's going to develop a lot, so uh, congrats to him. Yep, and that's going to be it for our final edition of the Rundown. Uh, it's been a great year for us. Uh, had, had some great things to talk about in all elder sports. So uh, to cap it off, uh, I'm Cole Carly. And I'm Zach Freeze. And that's the rundown.